second segment. Um, this week we're going to uh, outline and discuss typical 5K, 10K training plans. Um, and, and, and for the purpose of this conversation, we're going to look at a 12-week training plan. And, and I guess I'd like to start by thanking all of you who've submitted questions, giving me feedback, giving us uh, your response to the Ask the Coach segment so far. And, and what we've gathered is that you want to know more about training. Um, and, and so we're going to give you a, a, an outline over this plan, and then each of the, ne the next few episodes, we're going to detail very specific components of this plan, um, and then allow you to give me some questions, then we'll move on to discuss the marathon and, and probably some half marathon training as well. Uh, so again, like I said, we're going to start with the 12-week 12 5K uh, or 10K training plan, and I hope you can read my handwriting. Um, if you can't, don't worry, when I taught high school, none of my students could either then, so uh, I guess there won't be any change. But, so I'll start with uh, breaking down briefly each of the, the four phases of training. Um, and in a plan, and while you're doing it from day to day, you may not notice this. It's very, they, ideally, they, you, you transition very seamlessly from one phase, from one component of your training to another, but conceptually, each have to, plays a different role to the overall pe period of training. Um, so in this 12-week phase, or this 12-week pe period of training, this 12-week block plan, um, we've got four distinct phases. And, and if you read the literature, you different texts, different authors, different coaches, there's a lot of different names for periodization, but this is what we'll use for the purpose of this plan. Step one and phase one is the transition phase. And, and, and maybe you could call it your base phase, but really what we're going to talk about is taking you from where you are to where we want to be in the plan um, and where we, the training that we want to prepare you specifically for the 10K or the 5K. So it's a transition phase and it's about two weeks. Uh, the next phase, general preparation phase. It's exactly what it sounds like. You become prepared for the training ahead. Um, general preparation. So you're, you're going to start looking at the training concepts and attacking them and approaching them in training on a daily basis. Um, and we go to a very specific preparation phase. So in this phase, it, it, those training concepts become very specific to the demands at hand. Um, and then finally, the championship phase. And I think I, I, I chose that name, and we like to use that name, because it's exactly that. We want you to be a champion, we want you to have fun, and compete and make the most of your, 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 your premier race. Um, so okay, let's start back with the transition phase. Transition phase, and, and we'll talk about each of these maybe from a beginner's perspective and then maybe as a more advanced or experienced perspective. But from a beginner's perspective, you may not be running right now. You may be running zero week, miles a week. Maybe you're running four or five days a week, three or four miles at a time, but certainly not ready to tackle 10K or 5K training. So during this time, we're going to increase your mileage. Just over general, general, overall general training is going to increase and improve and become more consistent. So basically, you've got a two-week period here where you can become a runner again, and you can transition back to it. Um, and, and, and for you more advanced runners, this phase, we're really going to start building a long run. That will probably be the first thing. Well, in fact, it will be the first thing. We want to have that weekly long run that can, constitutes about 20% of your weekly mileage. So you can do the math there. If you run 50 miles a week, we, we try and get you a 12-mile run. Um, but but it, it, again, we're just transitioning. So we're going to start working on a long run, and then if you already are fit and you're already running decent miles in the long run in, in your plan, we're going to include probably some steady state or some tempo running there. It may be in form of a progression run, or, or uh, you know, I know Coach Jeff likes to call it a cut down. So it, 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 that's where we'll kind of start with that. Um, and after two weeks, then we enter really is a very specific 10-week training plan for the half 5K or the 10K. Um, and this is going to be the first phase. Of, the, of that 10 week block is general preparation. And here, we're now a runner. Um, we're now prepared to train. So we're gonna start adding some very specific aerobic and anaerobic components to your training plan. And the very first one will probably be in terms of a fart -like. That's one of my favorite ways to introduce speed work. Um, you know, and I know there's a number of ways to do this, but remember fart is a is a Swedish term. Um, speed play, quite literally. Um, so these workouts are designed to be fun, to give you a break from regimented training, and yet encourage you to really push past uh, that easy running pace and really aim for hopefully 5k goal pace. I mean, and now remember, those products will definitely be for beginners, so it might be in the phase of, let's start the very simple first workout is 10 times one minute hard, one minute easy, or maybe something slightly more advanced, 
uh, a ladder of sorts. One minute hard, two minutes hard, three minutes hard, four minutes hard, five minutes hard, and then back down with equal or half rest. Um, and even then, it may be something on the track, which is almost a farling style. 200 meters hard, 200 meter easy jog with some more prescribed paces. And that's, and that's for beginners, but for you uh, more experienced runners, some people who've done some 5K, some 10K pace, we're going to start making your first track workouts will be there. Your very first speed workouts will be there. To really, uh, and, 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 and in those days, we're going to very specifically target what we call the VO2 max, and that's uh, that maximal oxygen uptake. So without getting science, too scientific about it, but it's kind of think of it where uh, you're anaerobic and you're aerobic kind of meet. So you're running hard, but you're out of breath. It's certainly not conversational pace, but it's hard. It's maybe phrase pace, uh, or maybe even syllable pace. It's pretty hard. Um, and then also in this, phrase, in this phase, we're going to place an emphasis on lactate threshold training. So without getting too physiologic, like, you know, without getting into physiology, think of this as phrase pace. It's not conversational, but it's not that syllable pace. Um, so maybe for you to start, you're going to take your goal 5K pace, um, probably more accurately your current 5K pace, at 25 seconds per mile, and that will be your goal for those workouts. And then those will be, appear once a week. Um, and we'll also have, like I said, that speed work once a week. And really, objective here, gain fitness and confidence. So we've talked about the, the, the workouts um, to gain that fitness, but also briefly, let's talk about the confidence. By the end of this four-week block, you should know uh, what your clear-cut 5K or 10K goal is. And also, by the end of this four-week block, every, all of your workouts, if you're preparing for a 5K, the intense speed work, you should be getting at least 5K of volume, meaning three, five, three times one mile with three minutes rest. Or maybe it's six times 800 meters at two minutes rest. Um, but now if, if we want to talk for, for 10K, you're certainly going to want to be doing at least 10K of volume of those speed work, uh, of those speed sessions. So the main thing out of that, though, you're gaining fitness, of course, and you're becoming a runner, you're really transitioning into specific preparation, which is the next phase. But by the time you finish these four weeks, confidence is key. That's why it's underlined. And, and if you can read my sloppy handwriting, it's, it's kind of bolded and underlined so that you come out of here with your clear goal. You know, okay, a 25-minute 5K is realistic. All right, well, wow, maybe a 16-minute 5K is realistic or wherever it may be. Um, one of my favorite goals that I've ever had, a runner that I coach, was to run his age for 10K. Um, he was 46 years old or in his 40s, and it was a great goal, and it was something that by the time we got to specific preparation, that goal was tangible. So then when we get to specific, and excuse me, I just noticed the typo. This says two weeks. We want four weeks of specific preparation phase. Um, and our objective during this, workouts match the demands of the race. And that's simply put. So we know what our goal is. We know if it's possible. We know where we're at. Uh, but we are going to be very specific. So when we start here with maybe some far licks, um, and we become slightly more structured, and we're just gaining confidence and gaining fitness, here, we, okay, so if we know what our goal is. We know what it is per mile. We know what it is per 400. And each of these workouts, they need to make you feel tired. They need to simulate that late race fatigue if possible. And then you learn to battle that psychological and physiological effort um, that, that's involved in racing. And, and it's really tough to do over 10K, especially for beginners. But for 5K, we can get that done. Certainly, even in pre preparing for your first 5K with some very nice workouts, 12 by 400, uh, three, three times a mile, six times 800, less than complete rest and intense. We'll also still continue to emphasize uh, that tempo running. Um, you know, I also call it lactic threshold development. Um, but the emphasis switches from general overall fitness and, and improving mileage and, and that base mileage increasing through the first six weeks of the plan. Here, mileage will no longer increase. We maintain and we really strengthen uh, our ability to perform at race pace. Um, so from there, we get to the championship phase. And by here, number one, the most important thing is to be healthy. And that's, that's absolutely, if we're not healthy for the first 10 weeks, when we get to the last two weeks, it's going to be a struggle. 
We want to enter the championship phase healthy, feeling ready for that big championship race. And, and it may not be a championship. Maybe it's a debut. Maybe it's, uh, you know, it's just your local community 5K run or a charity run that you want to be a part of. But it's still fun and it's still competitive. Hopefully you feel competitive on the race day because you've prepared for 10 weeks. And also I should say for you advanced runners, before we move to championship phase, this is the phase of the specific preparation phase is the time where you will have the opportunity to add some races to your training. We all like to have some races. We all like to put the bib number on. We all like to have our name held out at the, the finish line. We all like the opportunity to get our name in the age division awards. So if you've experienced those things in the past, this is the time. So with your coach or with some forethought, maybe you know what your emphasis is, your major race, the race you're really looking for. So maybe that is a, a regional championship or maybe it's just uh, homecoming 5K back at your high school or your college that you really want to demonstrate to some old friends that, that um, you're really running and training. Well, along the way, in specific preparation phase, you may want to pick out a couple races to measure your fitness, gauge your progression, and really maybe reassess your goals. And they also can serve as tremendous training. So that's really uh, another way to be uh, to incorporate training in, in the specific preparation phase during those hard workouts. Um, so you can see how specific it is. There's nothing more specific than racing. That's the most specific type of training. Now, but be careful, don't over race and don't overdo it. But I think it's very common to include a race or two during these four weeks, um, especially maybe an over distance or an under distance race. So if you're getting ready for a 5K, try a 10K and get a good hard effort there and vice versa. Um, but now let's talk championship phase. Sometimes, I, you know, if it's two weeks, the very first day of that two-week phase, so 14 days in advance of your championship, your, your big race, your championship race, um, and I know I'm calling a championship, but I do, I, not every race is a championship, but I like to think of everyone I coach is a champion and a really tough competitor, so I like to use that phrase for this part of the, 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 the cycle. Um, but that first day of this cycle may be a race, or you may have a race the first weekend and then a weekend off, and then your, your, your emphasis race. Um, but it's championship because we're really specific and all. there's two things we do. Well, three things. The two things that are important that are here as objectives, run fast, have fun. If I had to have a third, rest. We have to have the right amount of rest to be ready to race and to recover absorb the training. So in this cycle, or in this, in this phase of the, of the training block, we're really going to look for maybe one key workout. And I like to place that one key workout at least 10 days, you know, preferably 11, 10 or 11 days out from the championship. And that gives your body a chance to adapt, absorb the training, and, and be recovered and rested for your race. Because the worst thing you want to do is go into your race overtrained, tired, burnout. So this has got to be fun, and we're going to do some fast stuff at race pace or faster. But also I think, and, and you know, some people will call this the taper phase. I don't really like that phrase, the, the, the terminology taper, because it implies we really drastically reduce volume. We really dr drastically reduce um, exercise level. But remember, our body gets in a rhythm. Circadian rhythms are uh, how our body naturally operates. So we do not want to throw our body in, out of sync. Um, in our hormonal production, you know, particularly testosterone that really um, is, is, uh, is an androgen. You know, we want to be able to continue to keep our cycle. The time we get up, um, our activity levels need to be relatively consistent through this phase. Um, but an extra little sleep or taking your mileage down a little bit is definitely a good idea when we really look to perform at our highest level. Um, so, Hopefully I've recapped and given you an idea of each of the uh, four phases of our 10 to 12, our 12 week training plan for the 5K or 10K. Um, and as I said, in each of our next episodes, we're going to talk more specifically about each of these phases. So we'll talk for a few minutes about the transition phase and the following week we'll talk about the general preparation phase and what each, of the, each week of training may look like throughout the phase, each of the phases. So again, uh, Good luck getting your training plan started, um, and I look forward to your questions, emails, and, and responses to this video. And until then, um, I'm Blake Bolden for Runners Connect, and happy training, and see you next time.